Okay, this is another video that's going to try to help you um, create sort of animations, I guess, in GeoGebra. And um, so I'm at GeoGebra.org and I'm going to click GeoGebra Classic here and kind of get started. Okay, so uh, this is the initial setup. And what I want to do is I'm going to use Curve. So I use Curve all the time when I'm trying to make these animations. Um, so I type C-U-R-V-E. And you can see it pops up this template you can use. I find the template isn't uh, super awesome at uh, moving through itself. So what I'll do instead is I just know what I need to type. It's going to be an expression for x, an expression for y, what parameter I'm using, the start value and end value. So I'm going to actually just open a parenthesis and the template will disappear. And you can see there's a yield sign because I haven't filled in enough information yet for it to actually work. So once we have this, we can just type in um, kind of something directly. So like maybe two, I'm gonna use V as my parameter, I think. So two V uh, comma, I don't know, V plus one. So two V is what is happening for X and V plus one is what's happening for Y. And then I need to tell this thing that V is the parameter. And maybe I wanna start at negative one and stop at positive one. And you can see as soon as I type that, it pops up. If I delete this one, and change it to two, it'll change the curve. So I'm just gonna press enter and it's kind of fixed there. One thing I like to do um, at this point is I like to actually click this thing right here that's to the right of where I type curve. Um, and it just makes this little extra menu pop up. But what's nice is that you can get to the settings for this. Um, so I pretty much always try to do that because at some point you'll want the settings for this. And if this isn't selected, you can't really see it and it can be confusing. Um, so that's why I do that. So here I can uh, just go in and you know change this maybe to negative negative two, um, and you can see there's a label here, and sometimes I want to hide that, but not yet. Um, so this is all good, but it's a little annoying to have to click this and then move through the template every time. So what I prefer to do is um, I will define new functions. So I'm going to define an f of x is let's say three cosine of x. And you see the graph comes up. I don't really want to see this graph. So what I'm going to do is um, click this circle here and it'll hide it. And then g of x, I'm going to make a uh, sine of 3x. And again, I don't really want to see that. So I'm going to click there and hide it. Now what I'm going to do is go back up to curve and I'm going to change the x component to be um, f of v. And I'm going to change the y component. So I'm just holding shift and deleting this. Um, to be g of v and I'll press enter now and you can see it uh, really changed the graph quite a bit um, so these are trig functions so with trig functions usually um, just to get a sense of what's happening you usually want to start with like 0 to 2 pi so it goes 0 to 2 pi and we get this so we get this kind of nice weird looking curve um, so that's good now I can just change these so those are the functions I ultimately want to use but I could change it to you know 5 and uh, four and just see what happens. And uh, sometimes you, you might not be sure, so maybe you wanna add uh, something here, just to make sure you're seeing the full curve. I am seeing the full curve, so it didn't make a difference, but um, you can check that after you make changes to your, to your uh, component functions. So let me change this back to uh, three. Uh, there's actually nothing special about this curve, but uh, it's what I decided to use. So we have this. And that's a pretty neat curve. Um, I'm going to change. I'm going to create a slider now. So there's two reasons that I'm creating a slider, and we're going to look at both of them. So I just press T or type T, and it asks if I want to create a slider, and I do. So I'm just going to click this, and it defaults to negative five to five. We can change that. Um, one thing that I really like to change about sliders, I like to hit um, the three dots there and go to settings, and then I like to change it. So click slider once this pops up and change from oscillating to increasing. So oscillating will make it go from negative five to positive five and then backwards from five to negative five. I don't really want that. So if you make it increasing, it'll go negative five to five. And then once it gets there, it will um, just bounce back to negative five and start over, uh, which I do want to happen. So I click the X to save that. And now let me just like press this and you can see what will happen. It's going kind of slowly. I can make it go faster, but you can see it, as soon as it gets to five, it jumps back to negative five, which is good, because that's what I want to happen. You might not always want that to happen, but it's what I want to happen here. So let me pause this, 
I'm gonna change this so that it's starting at zero and ending at, um, I'm gonna have it end at like four pi. So we have this and I can animate that, that's good. But what do I wanna do with this? So the first thing I wanna do is I want to uh, just put a point on the curve A. So what I can do is I can, GeoGebra treats A as a function, I mean it is. So it's gonna be A of T and a little point shows up and if I animate, you can watch the point move along the curve, which is nice. It's also nice if you hide the curve. Sometimes you don't really wanna see the curve, you just wanna see the point moving along the curve um, and you can get nice looking things that way. So we can see this. There's another thing we can do. The um, parameter start and parameter stop can actually be dependent upon t. So they can be their own, um, they can depend on another variable. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go from, uh, I don't know, t to t plus one. And so all we're ever gonna see is like one unit of time, I guess you might say, for this curve. Um, so let me hit enter. And what I like about this is that um, it looks kind of neat, but you might notice that uh, in doing this, the point is kind of at the tail. So there's two options. One, I can go in here and change this to be t minus one, and this will be t, and then my point will actually be at the beginning of the curve, which looks a little better, I think. Um, a second option I will do on another curve, just to kind of show you what can happen. So we have this set up. I think it looks kind of neat. Uh, looks like uh, something kind of swimming around. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another curve. So I'm just gonna type curve, C-U-R-V-E. And then the curve I'm gonna do this time is negative two. I'm just gonna kind of like hard code it in. So I'm not gonna create new functions for the, for the components because um, our list is pretty big and I have a plan. Um, so here, V is my parameter. And for this, I'm gonna go from T to T plus 0.5. And I see this. Okay, so if I animate my slider again, now I have two things that are moving around. So what I probably want to do is I probably want to put a point on this one at the beginning. So if we go back and look at the definition here, I have to kind of scroll to the side, it's going from t to t plus 0.5, so the front of this is always at t plus 0.5, so the point that I put, I want to be at b of t plus 0.5. Five. You can see as soon as I type t, it's at the end, plus 0.5 moves it to the front, and let's animate again. So it's looking kind of neat. Um, one thing that I don't like is that all these labels are here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, like two finger click on this, and it's basically right clicking if you have a mouse, and uh, I just unclicked show label. So you can see here, this little A is here. When I do this, it's gone. And then do the same thing here, show label. Um, and then I really, I don't really need to see this either. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to settings. And then so I'm on point A, I, I've gone to settings by clicking the three dots, go to color, I'm going to make this uh, red, I guess. And then you can actually turn off the label here if you go to basic and uncheck show label. And now if, I'm, if I click on B while I'm here, it changes over to all the settings for B, so I don't wanna see the label. And what color? I don't know, I'm gonna make it this greenish color. Um, actually, that is green according to this. So now we have this. And you see they're going kind of at different rates, um, and sometimes they appear to have different lengths. And so it looks kind of neat, and that's the whole point. We're just trying to like play around and create an animation. Um, so another thing you might try to do here, because they kind of look like things that are swimming around, is think about what if I tried to, uh, I don't know, put them in like an aquarium. So I'm gonna do that with just a rectangle. I'm gonna put a rectangle around where they're swimming, but I need to figure out where they're swimming. So if I look at curve A, it's X coordinate is determined by F. And if I look at the definition of F, F is three cosine. So I know that F, the X coordinate here, can go anywhere from negative three to positive three. So that's a, a thought on a start. And then the Y coordinate um, is G of V. Oh, I can actually just look down here. So here was the X coordinate. It's between negative three and three. 
And then the y coordinate is always going to be between negative one and one because of the amplitude of this sine function. So right now the box would need to be um, uh, like six wide on the x axis and two wide on the y axis, but I need to think of the other curve also. So here on the x axis, it's from negative two to two, so that doesn't change anything. But the y axis, I can go negative three to three. So I need a polygon. Uh, I'm going to make it a rectangle. Well, I guess I'm going to make it a square, it turns out. Um, so I'm going to use the polygon command. So P-O-L-Y-G-O-N. And you can see there's a lot of options. There's a list of points, and then it uh, uh, like another list of points. You give it two points, a number of vertices. I'm just going to directly type them in. So parentheses. So I want to start. I'm going to start at negative three, uh, negative three. Then I'm going to go to uh, positive three, negative three. And you can see there's one line, one segment, and then comma, I'm going to go to three, three. You can see as soon as you type three, it makes a polygon with three sides. Um, but I actually want to feed it the vertices. So three, three, and then negative three, three. And OK, so it's kind of a gross looking aquarium if it's an aquarium. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to change the color of this. One thing to notice, when you use polygon, it creates a lot of things. It creates all of the segments. Um, and it also turns the label on for all the segments. So I actually want to go through and turn those off. So I'm going to right click on each of them. Don't show a label there. And don't show a label here. And don't show a label here. And don't show a label here. OK. And then I'm going to two finger click on this and go to settings and color. And let's pick a watery color. Let's pick something darker. Let's make it, let's increase the opacity a little bit. OK, so I don't know. That looks OK. Close that and hit play. And there we go. We got two weird little things that are swimming around. Um, there's one other thing that I'm going to do. There's no reason to do this, but there's no reason to do any of this other than to just kind of like learn and have fun with it. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some points on the tails of these things. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a sequence. So here's what I'm going to type. SEQ. Ooh, I almost forgot how to spell sequence. So SEQ and everything pops up. Um, so I'm going to use the one that says uh, expression variable start value end value increment. So the last one in the list. But again, I just have memorized what to do because I don't really like using these templates. So. The expression that I want, I'm going to put something on um, curve A. So I want A of, I need a parameter, so I'm just going to use V. So I'm creating points. I'm going to create a sequence of points. And then V is um, the variable for this expression. And I want to start. So let's think about how A is, de is um, defined. If we scroll up, A goes from T minus 1 to T. That's, that's the part of the curve that we're seeing. It's from T minus 1 to T. So I also want this to go from t minus 1 to t. And you can see it's already put a point at the end here. But this has another argument, which is, um, what do I want to count by? So I'm going to count by point 2. And so now we have a bunch of points on here. And they're kind of a weird color, but I'm not going to worry about that. Let's animate this. And you can see those points always just kind of stay where they are. So I'm going to do that also to the other curve, um, and then probably call it a day on this. So let's see. Um, I need to figure out how that curve is being created. So it's being created. We're going from, so here's kind of a hint. The point B right here is at T plus 0.5. Um, and if you scroll through the definition, you can see that the curve is going from T to T plus 0.5. So I need to think about that as I create this sequence. So I'm going to do the same thing. Sequence, and then parentheses. So the expression in this case is going to be b of v. v is the variable. I want to start at t. I want to end at t, uh, t plus 0.5. And let's go by, um, I don't know. I mean, last time we got 5 because we went by 0.2, and it was one unit long, like the interval from t, t minus 1 to t. Uh, this time, the interval is only uh, 0.5 long. So I'm going to count by uh, 0.05s. Uh, point o oh yeah, I want to go there, there, and then by 0 0.05 and press enter. So we get 10 of them to go from uh, t to t plus 0.5 by 0 0.05 takes 10 steps. So we get 10 of them. And then uh, I could change the color. So if you 
quick again, go to settings, or you could click those three dots. Uh, color, so I mean they're red, so I guess I'll make them red. And then same thing for this sequence, just click it in the description, and then you can change the color here, which I think I chose this color. Yeah, and then click this X, and then I'm gonna hit play. And it looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to also, so I'm just clicking where there's nothing, and I'm, I'm right clicking or two finger clicking. I'm gonna turn off the axes, and then I'm gonna turn off the grid, and it just kind of sits there, and it looks sort of neat. Uh, if I were gonna do it again, maybe I would make it so the aquarium's a little bigger so that these points don't kind of like go over the edge. Um, but whatever, uh, this is just some of the things you can do. You can play around with it. Um, using sliders and curve, you can control where things are in the coordinate plane um, or in space if you're doing this in 3D. Uh, and it's a really neat thing to be able to do. So I hope you found some of this interesting and helpful and uh, good luck.